All right, everybody, last week was a disaster. Okay, who decided to give Kim Kardashian a rape joke? Oh, she was asking for it. Okay, hey, I'm not paying you to make jokes just yet. The only reason you're here is because your Uncle Lonnie and I used to go to spin class together, okay? I'll make sure Uncle Lonnie hears about this yet. Okay, okay, I'm sure he will. Anyway, it's charity month at the network, and we are charged with producing a charity roast. Oh, God, I just did this. Not again. We literally cooked the duck last week. Okay, shut up. Okay. We're, we've partnered with the Peter Burns Burn Foundation, mm -hmm. so let's blaze some trails. Wait, so what you're saying is that we are roasting the burn victims? Hey, you want to keep your job? You'll burn these ass. All right, people, now that you've had some time to think about it, let's set the world on fire. All right, I got one. Knock, knock. Who's there? Bravery. Bravery who? Every one of these people for being here tonight. Oh, boy. No? What else we got? I thought it was good. Kings of Leon are here tonight. Sex on fire. Hell yeah. Ugh. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm not trying to burn through our entire quarterly budget just yet. So, can't afford them. So we've got Diane here tonight. Diane's a fan of that soulful music. Hey Diane, how about a little more earth and a little more wind, but a little less fire? Huh? 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 Anyone? No? Oh, that was funny. Yeah, I'll have you clean out your desk later. Uh, what you got for me? Yeah, it's heard a little thingy myself. Tim Peck is here tonight. A year ago, Tim had a uh, scalding oil poured over him in a hate crime-related incident. As the uh, as the scalding oil soaked into his clothes, his tempered flesh was a uh, boil alive, resulting in a uh, fourth-degree burns of an almost indescribable magnitude as his scorching clothes prolonged his agony. Alone, uh, Tim's cries fell, uh, fell on deaf ears. His own, actually, as a catastrophe rendered most of his senses inert. But hey, Tim, you know, there's one thing I gotta say to you. Haven't you ever heard of that Nelly song where when it's getting hot in here, you're supposed to take off all your clothes? Are you serious? What? Really? Really? That was supposed to be a joke. Yeah. That's really what? offensive, honestly. What? We can get Nelly. Are you serious? I'm out of here. You want me to call up Awani?
Hello and welcome to Syracuse After Hours, your best and only option for sketch comedy on Citrus TV. It's the first episode of this fall semester. Hopefully your summer was a good one. You wouldn't believe how crazy mine was. This one day, I went to the grocery store and bought what I thought were premium saltines. It wasn't until I got home and was crumbling them into my soup that I realized they were actually low sodium. I hate you. <laughs> Craziest part is, is I didn't mind the difference. But enough about me. Let's check in with some of the other members of the show and see how their summers went. I actually had a very meaningful and spiritual encounter with a deer this summer. I, I woke up one morning on a ranch in Idaho, stepped outside, and standing there on the hillside was this beautiful creature just looking right at me. And we locked eyes for what felt like minutes until I truly understood what it needed of me. And, and slowly I dropped my pants and exposed my gens to this deer. We maintained eye contact, but its expression had changed to one of relieved satisfaction. It then leapt up into the tree line and I, I sank to my knees, my energy drained. So yeah, it was a good summer, thanks for asking. Well, I hit on a 30-year-old woman at a late-night hot dog stand in the streets of Chicago at 2 a.m. I got the hot dog. So, yeah. Um, I was in New York, and I was wearing my Superman shirt, and I walked into a liquor store, and as I came out, a man uh, said, Hey, man, I like your shirt. And I said, thank you. And he goes, is your name Steve? Like Steve Superman, I guess. So, it was a good summer. I jerked off a lot. And I helped a lot. Thanks, everybody. Sounds like we had some pretty good summers. So we've got a great show for you. Stick around. I'll know if you don't. I masturbated Eli. Did we get that? Has this ever happened to you? What's that? What's that? Introducing the Sporta Potty. With our patented triple seal protection, your turd will go unnoticed. You can just look like you're simply sitting on the ball whilst you actually drop a deuce. And now I'm back in the game. The Sporta Potty comes in every sport. Baseball, ultimate frisbee, and basketball. It's a slam dunk. I'll be right there, guys. Right after I finish my high fiber breakfast and coffee. It's my third today. Thanks, Sporta Potty. The Sporta Potty. So you don't have to slow down if you want to take a massive dump. On today's edition of People and Places, we're talking to Dr. Cortland Birdsong. He's from Salem, Oregon, and he's an artisanal blood spinner? Yes. Doctor, where did you go to medical school? I didn't go to medical school per se, unless you consider Mother Nature a school, which I do. Uh, but I prefer to consider myself a healer. Uh, I feel like the term doctor is a little traditional. Okay, so what do you specialize in? I focus primarily on artisanal blood spinning. What is that? So, the practice of a centrifugal blood spinning has become very popular among uh, athletes. It's a way to rejuvenate the blood once it gets old and gross. So it's like blood doping. Oh no, that involves uh, many chemicals, pesticides, preservatives, and you know, science in general, which I'm not about. Uh, interesting. So who are your primary patients? Please, don't use the word patients. I like to think of more as, uh, as blood containers. And uh, um, I primarily cater to members of uh, dodgeball, adult kickball leagues in the greater Williamsburg area and uh, trust fund kids who want to build calf definition. And um, your uh, average high schooler who wants to get high. <laughs> uh, Dr. Birdsong, are you saying that you uh, sell drugs to high schoolers? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I take the blood out of the high schooler and then mix drugs into it and then replace the blood back into the body. Or blood container, I should say. 
Okay. Well, I spoke to one of Cortland Birdsong's regulars. His name is Jack McCoogan, and he goes simply by self-given nickname Falcon. I've been coming to Cordy for like the past, I don't know, six, nine, nine years. And I gotta say, man, his tech seats, they're, they're really proven. They're incredible, you know? When I realized that kale smoothies and swimming in the Narragansett River back in Salem were just not doing the trick, I came to him, he spun my blood artisanally, and ever since, my kickball team has won like the past, like, seven, eight, nine championships? It's well worth the 3500 weekly fee. I needed to see artisanal blood spinning in action, so Falcon took me out here to the kickball field. You see, kickball is entirely a game based around momentum. As you can tell right there, that was just a moment that just wasn't that beautiful because I didn't have that momentum. But I always do, because I'm like the coolest man. Oh, That's wet. That's wet. And now, how to become rich, according to the richest men in the world. Oh, hello. Didn't notice you there. <laughs> My name is Reginald. Reginald Fairfield, and I am just one of the elite trifecta. And my name is Humphrey, the second member of the elite trifecta. And I'm Charles, the third <clears throat> and final member of the elite trifecta. Welcome. welcome, welcome. If you are watching this tutorial, you must have recently become rich. Or oh, bought a boat. <laughs> and as you probably have found out, being rich comes with a lot of responsibilities that you may not be used to yet. And that's where we come in. The goal of this video tutorial is to debrief you on everything you need to know as a rich person in society. Yes, there are just a simple set of rules that you need to remember in order to stay on top. <laughs> Rule number one, see to it that you, once you have made it, you'll provide no employment opportunities for anyone else who is trying to make it as well. More employees just means less money for you, your Swiss bank accounts, your multiple families, and your drug habits. <laughs> Rule number two, monopolize. It is absolutely crucial that you look for every opportunity to be in control of as many things as possible. In just this room alone, this trifecta, before you controls all of the internet, and all of the entertainment and media outlets, and just recently we became majority shareholders of the government, didn't we? That is right. That's, co that's correct. 65% right. uh, the last time I checked. Oh, wow. It is so nice to know that we control so much. Ah. You're damn skippy. You think the lights went out during the Super Bowl by accident? Please, I had to make two phone calls to make sure that was a closer game. Wasn't nearly exciting enough. And it's a good call that you made that, Charles. I think the NFL forgot who they were working for. <laughs> <laughs> a nine billion dollar industry. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Anyway, moving on to rule number three. Understand your position. Ah, oh, this, this is a big one. That's right, Reginald, because there is nothing worse than being accepted as one of us and overstepping your bounds. That is a no-no. Definitely a no-no. Not to say that there is anything wrong with overstepping your bounds. It's just rather we not have you killed. <laughs> oh, just a little joke. <laughs> we were not all serious at all. No. no. Yeah, we would never have someone murdered just because they wouldn't give us jurisdiction to build in Montana. <laughs> just a bunch of jokers here. We would never do that, would we? No. Of course not. Uh, all right. <laughs> Getting to the last rule. Rule number four. Go have fun. This one is the most important. What's the point of being rich if you're not having fun? After all, you're living out your peasant's dreams. Absolutely. Go out and live a little bit. Why not? After all, you earned it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you were born to it like us. <laughs> 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 Uh, 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 but don't get too crazy. You don't want to lose so much money, you're no longer part of the elite club. Because that's what keeps you a member, isn't it, Charles? Absolutely. And you will be a member for life if you just remember the four main rules. One, see to it. Once you've made it, you provide no employment opportunities for anyone else who is trying to make it as well. Two, <laughs> Monopolize. Three, understand your position. Four, go have fun. Ah, we hope you enjoyed this HPIC production. And please, continue to live the smug way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> we lost Humphrey. Another one might be better. This has been How to Become Rich According to the Richest Men in the World. This is Syracuse Live with Eli Thomas and Will Roth. Welcome to Weekend Update, Syracuse Live. I'm Eli C. Thomas. And I'm Will Theron Roth. Recent legislatures made it legal for Chinese chicken manufacturers to not label their chicken as being from China. Consumers will be left to determine the country of origin from the name of the product, Super Tasty Yum Yum Happy Bird Meat. A recent study shows that Indian men have the least amount of sex of any group. We beg to differ because they still have some sex. A mom of a soon-to-be Harvard freshman released an ad on Craigslist under Sugar Baby for My Son to organize a girl to help her awkward son lose his virginity before he goes to school. The mother promised four tickets for a great concert to whoever of her friends would meet her son and ask to go somewhere and proceed to take his virginity. It is a joint effort with the Make a Man Foundation. Ray Lewis was featured as, a, as an analyst on ESPN. Raven went on to speak about Aaron Hernandez's murder charge. This goes to show that you can murder as many people as you want as long as you have God's approval and two rings. A man infected 300 partners with the HIV virus. 300? Nice. 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 There's an outbreak of chlamydia on Syracuse campus. To prevent this outbreak, we turn to our very own Dr. Ooze. Dr. Ooze. Hello! Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Good to have you. Mm. Hello, my name is Dr. Ooze, and I am here to tell you how to get La Chlamydia. First things first, you need to meet me underneath the overpass and bring a single can of Pringles. Dr. Ooze, uh, we're gonna need to stop you there. Yeah, we, we brought you on the show to give people tips on avoiding the STD, not to tell them how to get it. Okay, is okay. Just forget about the PowerPoint I gave you and, and we'll just wing it. Okay, tips to avoid the chlamydia. 
I guess um, stay away from public transit and uh, don't swim in Onondaga Lake. And definitely do not meet me underneath the overpass with a can of Pringles. Thank you, Dr. Ruiz. Any times. Any times. A woman in Poland wants to have sex with 100,000 men. She says, quote, I want men for Poland, Europe, and all around the world. I love fun sex and men, end quote. The first 1,000 men to have sex with her get a commemorative keychain, and the last 1,000 get gonorrhea. In Greece, a 16-year-old boy claimed to have shot himself in the foot accidentally. He later admitted to shooting himself in the foot on purpose to impress a girl. Said the girl, quote-unquote, ew. The irony wasn't realized until after. An English model recently had $31,000 worth of plastic surgery done to look like Pamela Anderson, which is almost as much as Pamela Anderson spent to look like Pamela Anderson. A homeless man was arrested for exposing himself on a ferry to Staten Island and will serve 20 days for public lewdness, whereas Miley Cyrus was paid $20 million for doing the same thing. Recently, a 19-year-old, while flying his remote control helicopter in a New York City park, attempted a trick with the helicopter when it flew into his head and he died. Undoubtedly, a killer trick. We will now have a moment of silence in respect. <laughs> right in the old, uh, right in the jugular. His mom wanted him to wear that helmet. He, she really did. She wanted him to wear the helmet. He, he, he said no to the visor. But he didn't want to because he's already a 19 year old playing with a remote control helicopter. By himself. By himself. Oh, do you think do you think all his friends just like ran off? <laughs> oh, shit. Think, mom's gonna be pissed. Do you think they took the helicopter first? Oh, oh. do you think the crazy. helicopter was still spinning <laughs> in his head? Because it goes upside down and yeah. then it hits you, and then this is stuck in your eye, yeah. and then that's right still in the, spinning. Right in the ocular cavity. Or it just cut him, and then it was just still, and then it flew off. <laughs> <laughs> it picked it up. It picked it up and flew off. <laughs> yeah, no, like that's that. probably our, our utmost respect. Shelly, tonight has been one of the greatest nights of my life. I, I just, I can't even... What's wrong? I just... I, hold on. Ralph, I already said no to a threesome. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Just, just, just relax. Barry is just... Someone that I use to help me say things in a way that makes more sense. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm not down with the two-man world, white and chocolate swirl, you know what I mean, baby? Okay, well, Shelly, here's the thing. I love you. He loves you, girl! And I see myself with you for the long haul. He sees you for the long haul, with kids and one of those blonde hair dogs. You're everything that I want in a woman, and more. You're one hell of a woman! Oh! You absolutely complete me. You complete Ralph? All he wants to do is put it in your mind! Hold on, hold on, hold on! Cool with the ad libs there, dude. My bad, player, you got it. So basically, what I'm trying to say, Shelly, is 
Will you marry me? Yes, ma'am, I'll marry you. Yes, yeah, she'll marry you. Gonna do it B-I-G like Texas. And you're gonna get it in like Nexus. Because you connect. And then you're gonna get it in. Get it in. <laughs> Okay, Barry, good job, man. Your work here is done. Come on, man, let me at least see the beginning, you feel me? No, Barry, come on. Come on, man, come on, player. Come on, player to player, I'm trying to see some skin. All, all right, right, all right, all right. Just let me turn off the lights first. All right, handle that. of I'm an Ashole's Relationship Advice. I'm your host, I'm an Ashole, and to my right is my fraternal twin sister, Yuren. Yuren Ashole, everyone, give a round of applause. Wow, thanks, Simon. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, folks, you know how this goes. You call in with a relationship problem, and we'll try to answer it for you. That's right. And now that I'm here, I think it's about time that we heard from the frustrated females out there. Ladies, Dial that number. Hello? Yes, hello. My name is Denise. Hi, Denise. Hi. So, there's this guy that I've totally been crushing on, and he's asked me on a date on Valentine's Day. So, obviously, I was super excited, but then when the check came, he asked me to split the bill with him. How should I take that? Wow, Denise. It sounds like you've got a real doucher on your hands. Well, you're in. Uh, maybe he was just a little tight on cash. No, I'm in. He's a doucher. Denise, there is never an excuse to split the bill on Valentine's Day. I suggest you do three things. Do you have a pen? Um, no. Great. Write this down. First, never call him again. Second, promise yourself to never retweet anything he tweets or like any of his Instagram photos. And lastly, but most importantly, sleep with all of his coworkers. All right, next caller. <laughs> Hi, my name's Rhonda. I am new to this whole advice thing, but I really need some right now. Why did you do that? Uh, too desperate. Had to hang up. You know, women. I'm Jill here. Excuse him, Rhonda. You know, men. <laughs> I do. Well, how can we help? Well. I've been contacting this guy on eHarmony for the last two months. And he likes cats and long walks on the beach, so I found a cat and I took it to the beach with a camera and... Wow. You were right. I'm always right. <laughs> Anyways, next caller. Yes, hi. My name is Wendy. Oh, as in Casper the Friendly Ghost's best friend? Um, no. Well, there's your problem, Wendy. I suggest that you change your name legally and fast. Wait, that's not my problem, though. Yes. Yes, it is. You guys give the worst advice I've ever heard. Well, what can you expect? We're just a couple of assholes. Syracuse After Hours. We're so dumb we couldn't pour water out of a boot with instructions on the heel. Syracuse After Hours. Like a handful of sand in July. Syracuse After Hours. It's a mouthful of wasabi. Syracuse After Hours. You want to see my impression of my mom real quick? Oh, me and my father, me and your father aren't proud of you. Syracuse After Hours. Watch Syracuse After Hours. Even though it's only about half as sexually explicit as Zoom. 